Okay, so you're putting your 10 pennies that I gave you on your game board. You're putting them in above any one of these numbers. And when I roll the number, you're going to take off a penny. Here we go. The first one is a 7. So if you had a 7 on the board, you'd take it off right now. Now, I'm going to be doing the opposite, actually. I'm going to be putting a penny, or uh, these imaginary pennies, up on the spots that I rolled, just to show you if there's a pattern or not. All right. Now, why am I not using these big dice? Because these do not, this does not count. Those are not random. When you roll something that's, that's supposed to be random, that's electronic, it's based on a program. If it's based on a program, it's not going to be random. Even the thing on your button, your button on your calculator called the random button, it's not really random. It's the best guess at, or best shot at being random based on a program. But randomness and computers don't really get along real well. Because you have to write a program to tell the computer how to be random, and then that, in effect, makes it not random. Now, could you predict the next number? No. But if you knew what the program was based on, you could. Okay, anyway, so we're just going to use old-fashioned dice. I also just kind of like doing that. All right, next thing is a four. If you have a four, take it off. You can't take off two fours, only one. All right, next one, nine. A four, a seven, and a nine. Next one, 11. <laughs> Who picks 11? <laughs> Who did pick 11? I'm curious. See, a lot of people picked 11. All right. Seven, lucky seven. There's two sevens. Eight. Next one is a five. I've got some Skittles and Starburst here for the person who wins this, so... Seven, lucky seven. Holy cow. How come so many sevens are coming up? On to the next one's an eight. Anybody down to two or one? Ooh, a couple people. All right, here we go. Eight again. I doubting that even helped anybody. It did you? Did you have three eights? Awesome. Okay. All right. Seven, lucky seven. The game's rigged. It is kind of, in a way. Ah, he's figuring something out. Four. How come six? Oh, wait, you got a winner? All right, we've got a winner. We'll play again. Everybody clear off your board. <coughs> Mr. F, come on up and choose your poison. All right, now put them out any way you want to. Learn from your past mistakes. If you only got one, <laughs> that was, <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah, do the opposite of what you did last time, maybe. <laughs> oh, you're heavy on threes because it's your lucky number. People do that in the casinos, too, all the time, and the casinos love it because people have their lucky number, and it makes them play in ways that are not necessarily smart. Counting cards does work. I can count cards, but, and it's not illegal, but it's, it's sort of like saying, do you know how to play football? But can you play at the pro levels? See, that's the difference between knowing how you theoretically count cards and actually being able to pull it off at the casino because they're really, they're watching for it and it's really hard to just do. You got to have a really good memory. Yep, Rain Man can do it. All right, here we go again. I'm just going to keep putting my pennies on top of what our old numbers were. That way we can get more and more data. Okay, so here we go. First one we get in this round is a two. That's right. You can see it if you want to. It's a two. Did anybody pick a two? Nobody picked a two. All right, the lowly two, always shunned by everybody. It's a five. And... Next one's a six. Finally get a six. And a four. And a seven, lucky seven. And a 11. You don't want to take a risk on putting them all in the middle. Eight. All 
All right, next one is seven lucky seven. Are you noticing something about seven? I hope you are. Four. Now that's coming out a little freaky often. Dice cheat sometimes. Four. No, I'm not kidding you. Eight. <laughs> seven lucky seven. Did somebody win again? Again? Now, it's not, he's not cheating. He's not a cheater. Now, he's also one of the top math students. So there could be there could be a correlation there. Maybe he's playing really smart. Or maybe he's just getting lucky. All right, come on up and get another one. But we'll play one more. Clear off your board. The dangerous thing about doing two winners is a lot of times I get like six people win at once then. So that's... I know, I'm sure you like it, but my candy supply dwindles rapidly. <laughs> okay, here we go. And the first number is a two. Six. Seven lucky seven. Ten. That was a ten. Eleven. Seven lucky seven. Uh, eight. Six. Eleven, that's kind of a weird one. Shouldn't be that many elevens, but there is. Eleven again, holy smokes. Eleven again. Stop the insanity. Oh, I was gonna have to go home if it happened one more time. Eight. Six. Six is finally catching up to where it should be. Seven lucky seven. Okay, we got to be getting people that are close now. Who's down to like one or two? All right. All right, here we go. I might. Five. Eleven again. If you had only known to stack it up on eleven. Nine. That 11 is pretty unlikely, and yet it happens so many times. It reminds me of, like, if I would have only bought about a year and a half ago, Siri, S-I-R-I, it's a stock, and a lot of people thought it was going to go out of business, so it went down to, uh, like, 9 cents a share, or 10 cents per share, and it's now selling for, like, about $2 a share, which would mean that you could have made more than 10 times, like 20 times your money and whatever you'd put on it, and it's sort of like this. Yeah, but you just can't know. You can't know 11's going to come up that many times. And you can't know that a company that looks like it's really going to go out of business is going to suddenly have its stock price soar. You, you could, no, I didn't get any of it. I had bought it back in the day um, and sold it back in the day and made a little bit of profit. So I was following the stock. But one of my friends did buy some at uh, 8 cents a share, and then, or 10 cents a share. And then he was like overjoyed when it made it to like uh, 20 cents a share. <laughs> so he sold it. So it went from 10 cents to 20 cents a share, and he made double his money. But he could have made 20 times his money, which would, anyway. So you can always look back and say, I should have done it smarter. All right, let's get another one here. Six. Seven lucky seven. Anybody still have sevens left? Did anybody have sevens left on the last one? All right, all right, here we go. Oh, great. I hope we don't get a four then. Please not a four. Anything but a four. It's an 11. Yes. Because <laughs> that's not going to make anybody win because everybody's out of 11s. I need something like a 10. Ten. It's a 10. Oh. 
<laughs> Nobody bet on 10? Six. Seven lucky seven. Did anybody have any sevens left at that point? All right. Eight. We have a winner. Yes. Woohoo! Only a single winner. I love it. Come on up. All right. Now. Okay, one more time. Make it fast. Yeah. But I'm gonna t while you're doing that, I'm going to talk about casinos and uh, a few of the other places that, that uh, use probability. The original question here, how do casinos, lotteries, and insurance companies make money? They all use probability. They all use probability. In fact, they'd be looking at this chart right here when they were setting their rates. Because if they were a casino, they don't want to pay off big when you hit a seven, do they? Because sevens come up so much, they don't want to pay out. So what did they do? In the casino, when you play craps, when you roll your very first roll, only your very first roll, then if you get a seven, it's lucky and you win. But anything after your first roll, like your second roll, your third roll, your fourth roll, and a lot of times you roll like 10 times, all the successive ones after the first one, if you roll a seven then, you lose. And everybody at the table loses whatever they had bet, unless they had bet on a seven coming up. So the point is that the casino stacks seven so that seven usually wins for them because seven comes up so much. And do you, don't you think a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people who walk up to that table don't know that seven comes up more than the other numbers? A lot of people think they all come up the same. And so they just think it's a, some random number that the casino wins on. But it's not. They pick the number that comes up the most. Now granted, again, on your very first roll, if you roll a seven, you win. All right. But they set it up so that sevens and elevens, the other number that that happens for is 11. If you roll a seven or 11, you win on the first roll. After that, if you roll a seven or an 11, you lose, and so does everybody at the table. And you keep rolling until you get a seven or an 11. Uh, those are called craps dice, and the game is called craps. And I don't know why they picked 11. I assume they wanted to pick a number that, wasn't, that didn't come up a lot, because if sevens and eights both lost for people, I'd figure out really quick that, man, we're losing all the time here because the, you know, the sevens and eights come up a lot. So, all right. Anyway, you've already got your numbers down. We'll do one last game. Here we go. Ready? Ready? You know, speed round this time. This one's at 11. This one's a nine. You know what? Okay, we'll stop for a second. You don't get to take off an 11 or a 9 because you snoozed. All right. You probably wouldn't have had an 11 anyway. All right. Ready? Here we go. And this one's a 9. And this one's a 7. And this one is a 9. And this one's a 4. And these, this is a three. I didn't have one all game. We finally got one. <laughs> Your lucky number finally came up. Uh, eight. There we go. And a 11. That is just insane. I've never seen that many 11s. Six. Nine. If I was trying to cheat, I wouldn't make it look like this, because I'd want to cheat to make it look like it's supposed to look, and there shouldn't be so many 11s or 4s, but anyway. 12 finally comes up. Who would, who would bet on 12? Nobody put a 12 on? <laughs> 5. 3. 10. Not as many sevens this game. There were a few. Seven lucky seven. Twelve again. Hadn't come up at all, and it came up twice here. Five. Three. 
Nine. Seven, lucky seven. Got a winner? All right, we have a winner. Okay, come on up. No more, we're done. Okay. Now let's talk about what we just did. That's called experimental probability. That's where you can predict what should happen all you want, but then when you actually do it, that's an experimental probability. The kind you predict, that's called theoretical probability. So if you do it enough times, the experiment will tend to turn into the theoretical probabilities, which theoretically, seven should come up the most. Why? Let's talk about that for a second. Well, if I take this just for a second and I copy it, I will show you. No, there's not the same. It's a good question. Shh. So there are a lot of possible things you could roll. In fact, there are 36 different combinations. Why? Because there's six for the first die. You got to think of them as separate dice. And there's six for the second. Six times six makes 36. There's 36 different things that could come up. How many of them would give you a 12? Only one of them. A six and a six. And I know you're thinking, but what if the other guy, you know, he'd switch them around? No, they already got a six. You know what I mean? You can't do it twice because seeing six and six and then six and six doesn't make any sense. All right. And if I do an 11, there's two ways to get an 11, isn't there? A five with a six or a six with a five. Or if you're like the kid last hour, a 10 with a one. Yeah. Um, anyway. The seven, no, the seven is a three and a four. What else? A four and a three. And what else? Five and a two, two and a five, six and a one. And so there's one, two, three, four, five, six out of 36 ways to get a seven. So that's the one that's the most likely to come up. Now, what's second, in, what's second place tied for second place? Eights and sixes. Because a six you can make with three and a three, four and two, two and four, five and one. One and five. <laughs> nice. Okay. This is called the normal curve or the bell curve. And it's not looking very bellish right there, but it tends to kind of look like that. And this could be, this is called the normal distribution. And the right in the middle there, that's the normal. For IQ, for instance, do you know what they set IQ normal to be? 100. Now, if your IQ is, uh, is higher than 100, okay, then you're smarter than average. Now, does that automatically turn you into like a better person? No. Does it make you get better grades? Nope. There's a lot of really bright people who don't get good grades. Okay, but there's this all co big combination of things that makes you uh, special and IQ is just one of the things I, I, I think I don't think anybody would argue that a high IQ is bad except a really really high IQ might make you significantly different than everybody else And if you've ever seen Lord of the Flies you don't want to be the one that's different or they hunt you down with spears yes uh, I think it I think 175 is definitely a genius IQ can you be a genius at lower than 175? Yes. I think it's a, a lower limit than that, but I don't know the number. <laughs> I'm not going to ask Siri right now. Yes. Pyramid. No. Wow. Yeah. Obviously a genius IQ in that case. There's, there are people that are your age and are already medical doctors. Isn't that insane? There are people that are your age that are medical doctors because they can do everything that the doctors can do and they, you know, they, they've already learned it all. And I mean, why should they stop them? You know, can they stop you from becoming a lawyer or whatever? Nope. They can stop you from becoming a president of the United States though. You know what you have to be to be president? All right. So you have to be old enough, they figure. 
So you could be nine years old and appointed to the Supreme Court? Okay. Yes. Art what? Oh, yes, yes. There is, there's something called being a savant, too, which is really interesting. Uh, I've seen a savant that um, is a person that has very low social skills but has an amaz one amazing ability. Like it might be in math. Like you can tell them any two numbers and they just multiply them or, or add them or do crazy things like add up the numbers from one to a thousand, you know, and in just a few seconds. There's actually a pattern for that, yeah. But Times three, times four, times five, times six, that kind of thing. Or oh, doubling. Yeah, there, there are amazing abilities in math. There's also amazing abilities in music. I've seen people who are, they again seriously could not carry on any conversation with you, but they can sit down at the piano and without any lessons or anything, they can just play amazing music, just like 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 you could never dream of playing in your whole life. And they've got that part of their brains that's super developed. Yes. So you could spell words when you used to, and most kids aren't even saying words yet. Yeah. So anyway, there's the normal distribution. Notice it looks a lot like our two dice problem. What else would be normal distribution? Yes, it looks like a pirate hat. But the question is, what else would be normal if we like figured out there's a l here's the here's the way to ask yourself. what is there where there's a lot in the middle and there's not many at the extremes okay there's a lot of average high schools and there's not many that are really bad and there's not many that are really good okay I'll buy that yes okay so the populations of states. So, so you're saying if we picked uh, a, a number for each state, like uh, California is like 58 million or something, and Minnesota is like 5 million, um, how many people they would have in their state? I don't know how I, I think if I, if we took all the states of, yeah, that would make some sense. There's probably not many states that have only a few people in them. Okay, now you're changing my paradigm. I was, it was working for me for a second there. Um, I'm going to stick with the states thing. There's not many states that have very low population out here. There's not many p states that have extremely high population. That there's like, uh, the, bi the biggest one is Texas. I know, or no, uh, California. I think maybe second place might be sec Texas. But, but there'd be a lot of states in the middle. All right. You know what another state is that has a very low population? North Dakota and why am I bringing out North Dakota they're just in the news today because they are just surpassing and they're becoming the second biggest state for producing oil in the United States and that is amazing our next door neighbor there is now just rolling in oil and I, I read an article about it it was fascinating how people some people always thought that the land up there would have oil in it and so some of the, the, the people that were considered like kind of crazy people were going around buying up the oil rights of their neighbors. Like right now, uh, if you own land in Minnesota and you have mineral rights, it's called, you own the mineral rights. And so if somebody wants to um, get oil from underneath your property, they have to go through you. It's your property, right? But you can sell your mineral rights. And that's what they, at least in North Dakota, that's the way they could do it. They could sell just the mineral rights, meaning that Okay, if they ever find oil onto my property, you get to own it. But in the meantime, I just get I, I get to have your money, and it's likely that they'll never find oil under my property. So, like right now, if you owned your property in Minnetonka, would you sell the oil rights underneath it for five thousand dollars? Some people are like, "I'll take the five thousand, thank you." And others of you are saying, "No way, I wouldn't sell that because what if they find oil?" But what some of the people were doing was, yeah, it's true. It's not just it's mineral rights. It's not just oil. It's, it's gold. Or what if there's a giant gold mine underneath your property? You don't own it anymore. You sold it to Mr. T over there. And he now owns it. 
And that happened in North Dakota. So there's actually very few people who own their own oil rights. And so all these farmers up there, a lot of them had sold their mineral rights. And so they don't get the oil money. So all the oil money is coming in, but it's only to a few people who took the gamble. But then again, they took the gamble. They paid these people like five or 10 or 20 grand for the rights. And now they did, there's a chance they were never going to get that money back. But turns out they hit it big. Yes. Very, very rich. There's one guy, for instance, that's getting $80,000 a month from his mineral rights that he had bought. 80000 a month. Yeah, and, and everybody thought he was kind of crazy. Yep. Uh-huh. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, what one of the guys did was he, he would wait until somebody was in financial trouble. And then he would say, all right, I know you're about to lose your farm. If you'll give me 20 grand, I'll, I'll, or I'll give you 20 grand for your mineral rights. And at that moment, it was like, God, I got to either take the 20 grand or, you know, I, I guess, well, it probably there isn't even any oil underneath this land anyway. So, okay. See what I mean? So if they're in trouble, like they need the money. And then they got the money, and now all of a sudden the oil gets discovered, and they're like, oh, crap, I shouldn't have done it. But that's true. They have, the people have the right. The point of the mineral rights is to be able to get the minerals out of the land, right? So they have the right to put a little, uh, like, I'm sure it's right in the contract how big the piece is that they can, like, actually have the pump. But they have, like, a little location. It's, yeah, pretty small. The size of a car or something, you know, on their property, it's pumping oil. Okay, we should move on because we've got a lot of things to talk about today. So a random process is something where no, nothing is predictable. Like this individual event, like if I roll these dice, you don't know what's coming up. It was a six, by the way. But you could tell over the long run where they were going to go. That's a random process. An event, a set of desired outcomes. So like something I want to happen. Like if I say, I really want a seven to come up. Oh, please, mama needs a new pair of shoes. And it was a five. I lose. Um, if there's, that's an event, is something that's going to happen. The sample space is a big list of all the possibilities. This is a sample space. That's the hardest one for kids to remember. So remember it. Stare at the board. Say sample space. All right, good. Now, you'll have a better chance of remembering it than the people who are too stubborn to say that. Experimental versus theoretical. Theoretically, a seven should come up six out of every 36 times, or one out of every six times you roll the dice, theoretically. Okay, it doesn't come up necessarily that, that amount. But theoretical is different than experimental. Experimental is actually try it. And if you do the law of large numbers, which is on here somewhere. Where's my law of large numbers? Maybe it's down here. Nope. Somewhere on this smart board, I have the law of large numbers, which basically says if you do something a whole bunch of times, it tends to come out to the theoretical, which you would have predicted it to come out to. All right. And your answers are usually between 0 and 1. 0 is something that cannot occur. Okay. There's not many things in life that are zeros. Like the sun will not come up in the morning. Well, it's, <laughs> it's possible that the sun might not come up in the morning. It's possible it could blow up. Okay, uh, and the problem is that we would all die, and so it really wouldn't matter anymore. But uh, there's things that are certain to occur, but not many. Like, I know there'll be a, super, a next Super Bowl. Wouldn't you agree that it's very likely there's going to be another Super Bowl? Yeah. Is it possible it could be called off? Yeah, it could get called off because of, you know, pr disputes of from between the players and the agents, or the players and the owners. So there wouldn't be one because there's a chance. Okay, the probability of one is rare. That's something that's certain to happen. Like, if I roll the dice, I will get a number. I think I could give that a one, that it's a 100% chance that I'll get a number. I don't know what number it's going to be. What if the dice break into tiny little pieces when I drop them? I suppose that's possible. You guys are always good at that kind of stuff. So, All right. Uh, so how do casinos, lotteries, and insurance companies make money? They make it based on probabilities. And the probabilities, for instance, for the, uh, the lottery, we talked about casinos. Lotteries are like that. I said you buy tickets. 
a pertinent news in item in Minnesota, they're just changing it to a $2 lottery ticket. Why? Because they want to make the probability, uh, they want to make you win more if you win. Your probability of winning won't change, but you'll win more if you win. Because basically, high pot, like a uh, high winning amount, attracts people. People don't buy the lottery because they could win like seven hundred thousand dollars that's that's still a ton of money but people get excited by like things like fifteen million or twenty million so they want to make the amount get higher and higher so they're gonna charge more for the tickets and their theory is that people will still buy tickets either way a lot of people only buy one ticket and they'll buy it one ticket whether it's two dollars or one dollar won't matter to them they'll just like it doesn't really matter that much between one dollar and two dollars now if you're buying fifty tickets it starts to add up you know but a lot of people are still going to buy the tickets. In fact, even more people that didn't used to buy tickets might start buying them because the, the, uh, their pot or their winnings would get bigger. All right, last one is insurance companies. How do they make money off of uh, probability? They figure out the probability you're going to crash your car, for instance. You guys are just about the age where you're going to start driving. And uh, when you start driving, your parents have to pay more for their car insurance. Why? Because there's a chance you're going to wreck the car because you'd never driven on ice before. And you think you may know, know what to do, but it's, it's really tricky. Even experienced drivers, it's hard to, you know, like when you start sliding and going out of control, it happened to me already once this year, um, I was able to pull a car out of that. I guarantee you, I put any of you in that car seat, on, and about nine out of 10 of you would have crashed the car what, with what happened to me, but I'm experienced. So um, not that I'm an awesome driver, I'm just, I'm experienced, I've done it before. I've, I know how to pull out of a spin and a lot of you wouldn't. So their probability of you having an accident is higher, especially in Minnesota with ice. In other states that don't have ice, there's much less chance that you as a new driver are gonna have an accident, but there's still a decent chance. Did you know, <coughs> did you know there's an 80% probability you're gonna have an accident or a ticket in your first one year of driving? No, two years, sorry, first two years. Between age 16 and age eight, 16 and 18, there's an 80% chance you will have a ticket or an accident. Does that mean you are personally going to? No, but there's an 80% chance. Yes? If you were a first time driver on ice, you would also, I agree, you'd be more careful. But what really was nasty about my situation was that you couldn't see the ice. It, it looked like it was just snow because it was snow on top of ice. And so it didn't look dangerous at all. And it was just a gentle c turn. It was not like a sharp turn. It was a gentle turn. I was taking a gentle turn, and all of a sudden, with, with the snow on top of ice, it's a wicked combo because it makes it even more slippery. If you've ever walked out on some really light, a little bit of snow on top of ice, it makes it worse. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes? Oh, now that's different. You can't say there's a 100% chance that a girl will have an accident because more... <laughs> oh, that's bad. Yes, that is a different thing to say. That on average, there's one accident for every girl. Then there's a 100% chance that a girl will have an accident. And by the way, I did not say that. That was... No, I'm not going to name you, but uh, that was an individual in class who's making those disparaging remarks about girls. I have to say that since that was brought up, Guess who pays more for car insurance, guys or girls? Guys, not even close. And it's not necessarily because their accidents are more often with boys. So why would they do that? Because when there is an accident, when it involves, when does it really cost the insurance company tons of money? When there's alcohol involved or when there's extreme speed involved? So that's usually guys. Sadly, it's true. All right. Now, we have to keep moving. The law of large numbers says that the more times you do something, the closer you'll get to the theoretical average. Okay, so basically, if you flip a coin three times, you're not going to know what's the probability. You flip it a thousand times, and you see it's 500 and 500, you get much closer to an accurate percent. All right. A contingency table. This is a typical problem from today. And you are going to do probabilities based on this, and I think you'll see that they're pretty easy. First thing, they asked a bunch of people, are you a male or a female? 
and in some cases you don't have to ask, in some cases you do. Uh, and the totals are here, and how many lefties and righties there were? All right, how many people were polled? That's an easy one. 100. Well, couldn't you say 48? What would 48 be the answer to? How many females were polled? Okay, so the total was 100. Does that mean every answer is out of 100? Many answers are out of 100, but not every answer. I'll give you an example. What if I said all the girls were put in one room and then I picked one? What's the probability that they were the lefty? That would be 4 out of 48. Okay. And if, why doesn't it involve 100? Because there weren't 100 people in the room. What if all the kids were in the gym? and I grabbed a random kid, what's the probability I got a lefty? 13 out of 100, 13 out of 100 then, yes. All right. Now, this is an important point. What it's out of is crucial. Most kids don't get the top part wrong. They get the bottom part wrong. So remember that anytime I say given, given that it was a girl, given that the person liked cheese, then what's the probability they like the fondue restaurant? Well, the odds would go up. How many of you ever been to a fondue place? Uh, was it really good? Did you like it? Some, see, I bet you your like for it probably depends on how much you like cheese. All right. Now, we're not going to answer all of these questions because I want to jump into your homework. Uh, I want to do one more that's kind of a tricky one. This one. What's the probability that a randomly chosen male is right-handed? Well, here's right-handed males. That's easy. You know it's 43. You're all going to get that right. But two, some people are going to put it 43 out of 87. Some are going to put it 43 out of 52. And some people are going to put 43 out of 100. Now, let's read it one more time. Probability a randomly chosen male is right-handed. Does it say they only picked from guys? It's, it's, it's really kind of a gray area. It's hard to tell. But I'll tell you, since it says it that way, a randomly chosen male, since they said it right after what they said about, you know, like randomly chosen male, it didn't say randomly chosen person. It said randomly chosen male. It is out of just the males. And therefore, it's 43 out of 52. Okay. I know it can be hard to judge, but that's why these are the hard parts. Yes. Yep, it'll say a randomly chosen person was a male who was right-handed. You know what I'm saying? So you've got to watch for right after the word chosen. If they go with person, then it could be a male or a female. If they go with male, they've limited it to just males. All right, so your homework, here it is.